All right, today we are um, fixing my car. So many months ago, because I'm a mechanic, my uh, clutch started slipping. So I started driving it calmer, but I ordered everything and it's all been sitting in our tool crib for six months. I don't know, something like that. Um, but what I'm doing actually is not only replacing the clutch in this, um, but I'm also doing a six speed swap and uh, putting an LSD diff in. So this is a how-to video. We haven't done very many mechanic how-to videos, but how-to six-speed swap and LSD swap a uh, NC Miata. It's actually pretty simple, but I'm going to go over the parts that we all have, and this is essentially what you need. If I find anything that isn't in this, you'll see that later, but I think I have everything. All right, first things first, six-speed transmission. So this one I got from a uh, local scrapper. Um, he actually only deals in Miatas. This has like 117,000 miles on it or something like that, somewhere around there. Um, you need the six-speed drive shaft and the LSD. So um, I'm not going to be using this piece because mine already has aftermarket bushings in it. This one's OEM stuff. So just nice that that came with it. Um, transmission fluid. This is the Ford Magical Unicorn Tears. Diff fluid, um, it's less important, but at least a good diff fluid for uh, whatever you're going to be putting in there. Red line's also good. Um, clutch, flywheel, and then we have seals. One is on its way, but it's the transmission output shaft seal. These are all the seals that I'm doing. So, Timken rear main seal. This is the input shaft seal. I'm going to show you how to change that out. This is something that a lot of the times people think the rear main is leaking, but it's actually the input shaft seal. New axle seals, because why not? We're here. This is a shift boot kit. It's got the lower boot, the upper boot. Reverse lockout for the six-speed only. The five-speeds don't have that. And then this is a NC1 six-speed gear lever, because the transmissions have different size bushings, so you want to make sure you get the correct one for whatever transmission you're putting in. And then this box is actually an old short shifter um, that I'm going to be putting in, and that actually came from a customer car because something broke on it. Um, I was able to fix it, but in the time crunch of he needed this car for work, I gave him the stock uh, shifter out of this one, and he likes the stock shifter better. He is an older gentleman, but he likes the stock shifter better, so he just gave me that. If you're going to go in here on an older Miata, the DEI heat shield for the Miata, that's the part number for it. This replaces the OEM heat shield that goes above the transmission, which it's rare when they're in good condition. So this is much better than the OEM one, and it sticks with adhesive to the car where the other one slides over a couple bolts and something's supposed to hold the entire thing on. Um, so this is definitely a thing to put in there. Um, it's gonna also help with heat and everything from the transmission, but we're gonna get started. I'm gonna take the shifter out first and then we're gonna lift the car up and I'll show you everything underneath it. All right, so this is gonna be for the NC1. The NC2 and 3 are slightly different. The big difference is they don't really have any screws up here and they have a different um, center piece. Also, the center console is slightly different. They don't have, like they have a removable cup holder and other things. So this, I don't have one in my car right now, but the little cover that goes over here, the pretty cover, it just pulls off. And then you're gonna grab underneath here and this will just pop out. You're gonna pop up this piece, has two screws under there. Of course, the radio we put in, which I have a video too. I do like this radio, it's just currently in the way slightly. You know that's removable, don't you? It is removable, I just don't want to um, mess with that right now. So. so the shift knob just twists off. There aren't any thing that actually holds this. And then underneath the front cup holder is another screw, depending on how much soda you've spilled will tell you how easy this will be. All right, 
Now this will go all the way forward. And then this piece back here actually comes off. And there's two screws, sometimes three, depending on the model of car you have. So I believe the NC2s and 3s have a third one in here. And the NC1s have two only. When you lift this up, you're also going to have to get the um, plugs under here out. There. There's normally a little piece that stays on here, which if that's there, then when you go to pick it up, you won't be able to pick it up as high as I did. It has to slide up off of this, which it's not super easy to slide up off of it, but there isn't really a perfect not trying or not gonna break it kind of thing. So you might break it, you might not. All right, so now that that's off, this will actually just slide up off of the uh, shifter. However, since I'm actually replacing the shifter and you're going to as well, you don't actually have to take that one off. It's just if yours slides up, which I don't know why mine's not sliding up, but it's angry. Um, if, it, if you slide it up and off, it's just easier to get to the three bolts that hold the shifter on. And then you can see the other boot down here. And they are slightly different. That's why this one even says, um, five manual. So now that those three are off, you can just pull up on the shifter. And now we're ready to go under the car to get the rest of it out. All right, so under here, I'm gonna take off a bunch of stuff. It's not gonna be as explanatory as the shifter, um, but I'm gonna show you before I do stuff. Um, these two bolts will come out. These two, all you have to do is loosen and then that piece will fall out. This one, this back one here, all you have to do is loosen and then the other three come out and that'll come out and then that'll come down. It's essentially those are so that one person can slide it up and then start another bolt. Um, after that, the exhaust is going to come down and then this is going to come off with a PPF. Um, it's the power plant frame. So it goes from the transmission to the differential. And so once that's out of the way, we're gonna take the drive shaft off. Um, I might take the drive shaft off once the uh, exhaust is out of the way. That actually might be easier. And then essentially the diff is just gonna hang out back here and the transmission will sag down when that happens. So I'm actually going to grab one of our stands to be prepared for it. If you don't have a stand or you don't have a lift, be prepared for it. That's really all you gotta do. Once we get there, I'll catch you up on what we're, what we're doing. So since I have just a race muffler here, it's not held on both sides, and one of the studs came out up front, so it shifted down. There you go. So I have the e-brake on, which means that the drive shaft doesn't turn. And essentially you can use this to get two of them and then turn it, set the e-brake up again, get the other two. And the nice thing is it's not a like welded on stud, but they put a little catch in there so that when the bolt is all the way in, this side stays where it is. So I got all four out and it's actually quite normal for the drive shaft to stay here. Um, sometimes you can just push it and it comes off. Other times you gotta use a pry bar and get it out but it depends on how rusty everything is. So then it slides forward into the transmission to give you a little bit of way. 
and then this is the five speed one. So we're not gonna use it again. All right, we're gonna drain the oil so that we don't make a bigger mess than we have to under here. So we're gonna get the diff oil as well. Oh, that looks beautiful. All right, and then cool fun fact. Um, <laughs> that's a cool fun fact. Glad it flew away from me. But, um, so I'm using wood underneath this, and it's because if you're going to use a jack or anything, or anything metal on metal, um, I do not recommend doing metal to metal. I wish we had the picture, but there was a, uh, uh, Volkswagen that came in here and she was complaining about a noise and all that stuff and granted her engine mounts weren't in it the whole engine was just swinging back and forth um, but we noticed like this would be it on hers although hers is aluminum so the little brace that goes across here and it was cracked in two spots right here and underneath it you could see the circle from a jack and if they used a piece of wood, probably wouldn't have cracked. Um, just because the wood helps distribute it, and the wood is softer than the metal. Where the aluminum is definitely softer than the steel jack, and they broke it. So that's the other thing too, even when supporting oil pans or any other stuff, just grab a 2x4. It's gonna make life easier. I'm gonna do the transmission first. We'll do the diff afterwards. There's four connectors on top of the manual transmission here. Uh, neutral safety switch and reverse light switch. We're gonna take off the um, slave and whatnot. And then that's pretty much it for these. They're very simple. Um, the only thing I'm going to do is we're gonna let this sag, which is also why we drain the fluid because it would just come out the back. I'm gonna take off this plate underneath the oil pan. And then I like to try to shove something under the front of the oil pan to keep the engine tilted back. If you've ever done one of these transmissions or you know, a rear wheel drive transmission at all, um, when you separate the transmission from the engine, most of the time, the engine wants to fall forward. And it falling forward now fights and everything as it's starting to come apart. You want it to stay straight when it comes apart. So propping up the front allows it to stay at the same angle the entire time. Um, I usually try to shove like a piece of wood in there or something like that again, because metal on metal isn't really great, especially when the thing you care about is aluminum and you shove a steel piece in. There. The steel piece ain't gonna bend, the aluminum one will. So I'm gonna take this off real quick. So I got a piece of wood shoved in there. I went from the driver's side because on the passenger side where the wood wanted to go is actually a, um, or the crank sensor and we don't want to break that. So I have it over here. I can push up on the uh, transmission and it flexes a little bit, but it doesn't go anywhere and the wood doesn't fall. So that's what we want. Now that it's sagging down, we can get to the connectors up here. I think you can see them on this side. So. The nice thing that they did with this is there's two white connectors and two black connectors. Um, best part is, doesn't matter which black connector the black connector goes into, just as long as it's a black connector. Hang that off to the side. So up here on the corner, you'll see like a ground and other stuff. That doesn't actually have to be touched. Just like on this transmission, the starter, you don't even have to touch it to take the transmission off. Um, so next is the slave. It's just the three 12s to get the slave off. Also for reference, um, my car is what they call a 2.5 swap. So we have a video of me doing all the 2.5 swap stuff and some of the suspension stuff I've done to this. But I highly recommend 2.5 swap. 
we actually should be doing a video soon on one because we have an NC that came in a couple days ago and it got starved of oil. So we're putting a 2.5 in it because why not? Much better. If you're going to use something to get the transmission up or down a jack or any other stuff and you don't affix it somehow, good luck. I don't, I don't know, just don't do that. So on this one, it has 14s holding the transmission on. There's two from the front, one on this side down here, one on the other side by the uh, slave. The two here, there's a few up top that way. There's, what is it, two at the very top behind the head, and then the two here. So the two here are a weird stud thing that's connected on the other side. All you gotta do is take the nuts off and it'll stay, or you can pull it out up to you. Um, but I'm gonna pull those out and then we're gonna back the training off. And um, if we're following along chronologically, we've been at this about an hour. Now, flywheel, clutch, and the uh, pilot, and then we'll get the throw out and everything else on the new transmission or six speed. When taking off the pressure plate, um, you can take off three of the six bolts without too much of a problem, but you wanna keep it in a triangle so that the last three you back off periodically because this is actually a giant spring and it's very strong. If you leave one bolt completely tight and take the other ones off, there's actually a possibility of you breaking that bolt. All right, so now we're going to do the three. And if you actually watch, you can see the springs move when you start to loosen it. Be careful when you take the last one off because this can just fall. And the uh, disc is technically held in by nothing now. Slide it off the dowels. All right. So disc doesn't look too bad, but it was definitely slipping. I'd put it in fourth and floor it. And I mean, you can see it's near the end of everything, but there's also a chance that this was a stock and I have a stage one now, which the stage one will hold the torque of the uh, two five way better than a stock disc. I guess that's the springs. Yeah, they shouldn't move like that. These were just spinning around in here. So probably didn't have much life left on it anyways. So this one I kind of use on the same principle, except for it's not sprung. So you don't have to do the last three slowly but I still do triangle and then triangle. The nice thing about this is the crank actually does have a lip that the flywheel sits on. So it's not just going to fall completely. If you actually try one of these, this is the, uh, what is it? Pilot bearing tool from O'Reilly. Um, that's actually too big to fit in there. However, one will fit in and it still works that way. See? Rear main seal coming off. So there actually is a special tool for this. If you get the Timpkin oh, uh, rear main seal, it normally comes with the tool, which is wonderful. But there's a special tool for this to slip over that and not mess up 
the seal because the seal is a little weird. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But other than that, you have to pry it. So all six bolts off, pull it back. It tilts back because this is attached there. Or you can pry it up here. It's whatever. But you got to clean up the seal here. And then you got to put RTV. I put a little bit up on the back of the block and across the back. So there will be oil coming out. Be prepared for that. Well, did not expect that. Few things while you're here. So when you take off any seal that goes around like a crank or a cam or any of that stuff, you want to feel with your nail to see if you feel any ridges. If you feel a ridge, then there is a chance that you're going to actually have a leak regardless of how you put the seal on. Um, with some of them, this one isn't one of them, but with some seals, you can actually put it in at a different depth and that will allow you to make up for any ridge that's there because you put it on a different point of the crank. But this one feels great. Cleaned up here. Um, I actually sucked out like, but we probably lost like 0.4 quarts or something like that um, from taking this off, maybe half a quart. And uh, I made sure that it wasn't leaking. If you wanted to, when you're doing this, you can drain the oil and just do an oil change. Um, then you don't have to worry about it. But, Scraping all of the RTV off of this surface is best. And then we're just going to put RTV back here. And like I said, we'll put a little bit going up here um, just because it's better seal. And then it does have an actual rubber seal that goes around here. The torque spec for this is eight foot pounds. It's actually technically 101.7 inch pounds, but we'll do eight. This is the tool, the, the white thing. And the reason why you need this is because if you look, the seal actually faces backwards towards the crank or the block. So if you don't have this tool, it's not going to stay in that position. And this tool literally locks onto and slips over the crank pulley perfectly. So having this tool, you can do it with the oil pan on, where if you don't have this tool, it's really hard and you probably have to have the oil pan off to make sure you don't install it wrong. So I'm not using a wrench to tighten these because at eight foot pounds, it is super easy to over torque. When torquing these, these torque to 85 foot-pounds, um, either there's a special tool or you hold the crank on the front, or I just put a bolt in here, make sure that this isn't pressing up against the threads, and just hold it back here. Sometimes you can do it by yourself, sometimes you need an extra person. So now it's time to tap in the pilot bearing before we forget. And uh, essentially what I do is I just get a socket that's slightly smaller than it. That way I can hold the socket and it and not smash my fingers. Um, I'm also using a dead blow so that we don't crush anything. This one does have a stop really far back, but I never hit it that far in, so. We're gonna clean this one too, because the same thing as the flywheel. You don't want any of the uh, shipping oils on there. And then I am going to put Loctite on these. So in doing this, I've learned that the best thing to do to save yourself when you're stabbing the transmission is you move this around. Granted, I have three bolts on again, but you move this around because it, it can wiggle. So don't ever trust the alignment of this. But essentially, if this goes in and out effortlessly, that's where you want it to be and then just make sure that it stays effortless. 
And then these torque to 24 foot pounds, but I'm going to essentially snug down these three and make sure that the alignment tool stays as nice as it is. So before we put the transmission up for good, I'm going to put the heat shield on. So I don't know if you saw, but I do have a different heat shield in there. Um, luckily they just stick with uh, essentially tape or adhesive, but I'm just going to put this stuff over what I have in there. And then I'm guessing that this tape is for any of the seams. So I don't see any numbers on this, but this one looks like it goes around the shifter. You can guess with that. And then we have these. So I'm going to pull up the schematic on this so that I can see the order that these go in. God, this is bright. Getting the transmission ready to go in, um, I'm going to be doing the input shaft seal because we have it. So I'm going to take that off and then we're going to do the output shaft seal on it as well since we have the rear main and everything ready up there. So I'm going to clean up a little bit of this, but it's under the car. You never see it. So I'm not going to like be a stickler about it. But yeah, we're going to pop this off. So it's just got the six bolts. I will say this is one of my favorite tools. If you don't have one of these, go get some. All right, so that is the seal in question. The rest of this just gets RTV, it's nothing crazy. And then you can see this hair looking substance that's actually clutch. Another reason why that tool is amazing. So you want to make sure that this is even because it's not like the rear main seal where it bolts on and it has a flange and all that stuff. This one, you got to hit it in. So you got to make sure it's actually even all the way around and it will still give you a good seal where it grabs the input shaft. Got my RTV on there. It just needs a really thin layer because it is two perfectly machined sides. So, and I did grease up the uh, part of the input shaft that slides over that seal. There we go. So I know when we started out, I said that, um, or I don't remember what I said, but this was the output shaft seal. We didn't have it when we first talked about all the stuff that we needed, but this is definitely one. Um, it's still included in the parts list and everything that we did. Oh, look at that. They sent me the wrong one. Uh -huh. <laughs> Literally, it said four six speed. Since it's my car and I want to go home tonight, I'm gonna put this one back in and, uh, when it leaks or when we have any issues or next week, I'll get the right one and yeah. we'll put it in. So new throw out we're going to put on and I always grease this up decently. I don't gob on a whole lot, but enough to get a coat all the way around to help it slide. Where I do put a decent goop on is the pivot ball just because it can make a rattling noise and then I also put it on the back of the bearing where metal touches metal and then it just slides on there line everything up and the spring clips over that pivot ball and then moves nicely. <laughs> there it is. All 
All right, before we do that, I'm gonna plug in my wires. And so just so you know, we didn't touch anything with this hydraulic system or any of that, but because it's a new clutch and all that stuff, I might have to mess with the adjustment under the dash. So for the diff, um, now that the tranny is ready to go, um, what I'm going to do back here is I'm going to try and only take out one axle and then slide the diff out the other way. Um, so essentially this wheel is going to come off. I'm going to take off a couple of these arms and then we're going to try to pull the axle away and hopefully that'll be enough to get the diff to come out with the other axle still 100% in. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a big hammer, get that out, and then hopefully that's enough to pivot that axle all the way out. I'm gonna take off this upper one on the inside here, and then hopefully just one arm staying on, I should be able to get it to move. If not, I can take all five arms off, that's just what it is, and then we can leave the other side together. But one axle out, we should be fine. Yeah, nope. Wow. Well, the axles are really long. <laughs> so, I'm gonna just have to take off this entire knuckle and then go from there, which essentially all I have left right now, other than the axle, is this sensor, this upper arm, which I can just take out this inner bolt, and the parking brake. So, or the actual brake caliper, but parking brake's a part of it. So I'm gonna get that out. Steve was away helping customers, and so I was able to get that out. I got the axle out on this side, so essentially now, all I gotta do is pop the axle over here, take out the two bolts that hold up the uh, bracket, the diff mount, right? Take out those two bolts, and then diff will come towards the passenger side, and we should be all hunky-dory. Like anything that's difficult, he tries to do at four o'clock. Oh. Oh. A little heavy. So I'm gonna do the axle seals now because there is no better time. I got that one plopped in. So if you're going to do it my way, I'm gonna tell you, getting that one in, only way I was able to do it was this ear up first, line that up, have something supporting the diff, and then I had to be on this side and just shake the fuck out of it until it fell in. So now that it's in, I'm going to try and get this at least up where it should be. Ooh. I'm gonna grab axle and everything and we're gonna stab it and put this side back together. There. Okay. This one's in, a little easier than the other side. Um, now getting all the arms together, I got the shock bolt started, so at least it ain't going to drop from there. Now we're just going to be getting the rest of these all lined up. Taking everything apart with the gun is fine in my book. Putting it back together with the gun, not a hundred percent okay with that. Ooh. We are... Finally in the home stretch. Um, I got everything tightened up here. Happy with that. We did the uh, 
of course you're gonna do the test, right? So I'm gonna spin this forward and watch the other side. Oh, what the? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, forward. Yes. See, an open diff would spin the opposite direction. We don't want that. We want this. They spin together. And see, it's not all the way in, right? And I was talking about, you turn it slightly and then it locks in and that's why it doesn't turn. So you don't need a wrench on the back side. Come here. There we go. All right. So lining these up is very important. And essentially I'll get one side kind of started. And then, as you can see, it's not lined up over here. It's not up high enough. So shoving the diff up will get it better. And then what I like to use for a general reference is you see where the old bolts were. So the transmission's got to go up more because of course there's an angle that these are supposed to be at, but I had no problems before, and that's where it was. Now it's time to torque the PPF. It actually torques to 113 foot-pounds. So I got them snug, because granted this one ratchets, but screw that. I was told this was drained when I bought it. Sure. All right. I know you didn't see it, but I got the transmission with fluid already. Get in there. Oh. 7590 is not easy. A ah. little higher on your end. All right. Oh. No! Come on. Get started. There we go. So it takes about 450 milliliters or so in the turret and I know there's no oil in there. So that'll sit in there. This slides over it because this is actually because I have the um, short shifter here. This is the reverse lockout switch. Definitely has an arrow pointing forward but this is where it goes and this is where it allows you to go into reverse is that little pocket under there. <laughs> All right, well. Huh? <laughs> it's so close. So now we'll see if everything I did works because it's 440 and I started at 840. So what was that? Eight hours? Not bad. All right, reverse. No spinning. Spinning. First. Look at that. All right. I might adjust the clutch pedal a tiny bit, but I'll be able to get home. That's um, what I want. I want to be able to get home and do essentially a drive a drivetrain swap in a day. So we'll clean up, back this thing out, and we'll go home. <laughs>